Hi, welcome to Citizen Survival Plan. In today's video, I want to talk about the benefits of having a base station and or as what it's actually called a mobile radio. Starting out with a handheld is probably the best place to be when you're first starting out. These basically, it's all one package. They work just like a mobile radio, but they lack power and extended local range. They basically require no setup whatsoever other than just screwing on the correct antenna and having it programmed, either by me or you can do it yourself in Chirp. So let's get into why you might want a base mobile or mobile radio as the manufacturers call them. They have higher output power. And regardless of what every ham and radio nerd likes to comment online, the extra power does help you. If it didn't, none of these radios would ever be made and everything would just be one watt of power. One of the biggest benefits to a base mobile radio is the fact I can hit repeaters outside of their actual range. So if you look on mygmrs.com, you'll see a lot of repeaters and you'll see the area coverage that they have them in. I always can hit repeaters outside outside of the official range of that repeater and I do it all the time. With my handhelds, I typically just cannot reach these outside repeaters and I can only hit the repeaters that are actually circled for my area. Another big benefit to the additional power, especially if you're jumping up into something that's like 50 watts or higher, it gives you better local coverage. Now, you do need to have a good antenna set up for this to really work. And radio people always comment, height is might, and that is absolutely true. But paired with 50 watts of power or more, you will flood your local area with way more signal and power. My 50 watt base station with its 30 foot antenna off the top of my house can go way further than me standing on my back deck with a handheld and trying to reach somebody clear across town. The base station is just gonna do it better. Another benefit to that is if you have a base station set up and you have an antenna up above your house, the handhelds have an easier time getting back to the antenna that is sitting high up. One note I want to veer off into really quick is you can set up just an antenna at your house and run a handheld out of it. Now the problem with this is you get a lot of coax loss. I have a clip of me testing a repeater uh, one time. It was the Redivis repeater that I use. And you'll note that if you have 22 or 25 watts of power, after 30 or 40 feet of coax run, you're really only going to get 8 or 10 watts out of that antenna. With that being said, that is a big thing with the base station radios. They have so much power that even if you run it through 30 feet of coax cable and you have a 50 watt radio, you're still going to get 25 or 30 watts actually spitting out the end of that antenna. So th that makes a big difference. During emergencies, I want to be able to receive better and transmit better from the inside of my house. A lot of times when me and friends and me and family are setting up radios, we all have to call each other on our cell phones and set up a radio chat. And a lot of us have to go outside and stand out there and, and, and wait in here. If you have a base station inside your house and you have an antenna running to it inside, you get better reception. You know, your, your handheld inside your house is just not going to receive and or transmit as well as something sitting outside. I can only hear one or two repeaters from the inside of my house, and I can only transmit to one repeater inside my house. There is about 25 repeaters that I can get to from my base station that I cannot, you know, do from the inside of my house with this radio. It's just very limiting having this radio go off inside of my house. You know, the copper piping and the electrical conduits and, and just everything in the house is just going to tamp that signal down. You know, just it going through drywall, the roof and everything. It, it just really, really tamps that signal down. So what I can do is just turn that radio on and just leave it scanning or leave it on a simplex or a repeater channel. And I can have that running inside my house and I can hear it go off 
And during an emergency, this is very, very helpful because I don't need to be standing outside with my radio all the time or walking outside every time I need to transmit to get a good signal out. Again, I need to veer off into something else, and that is homeowners associations. Why are you talking about homeowners associations when it comes to radio? Well, a lot of people complain that their homeowners association do not allow them to have an external antenna on their house. Now, I don't have a homeowners association. I throw all the antennas I want up, and my neighbors can just deal with it. But one thing you can do is put an attic antenna in. This gives you the highest point in your house to have the antenna and the least amount of stuff to go through. You know, there's no copper piping or anything that signal's gonna reflect off of or anything. And we've had good luck with it. I have set one up in my dad's house and he uses it and it performs very, very well. He can hit a repeater 30 miles away with his attic antenna. I will say it's definitely never as good as putting one outside. A lot of people have misconceptions with attic antennas and the discussions on them never dial down to this. And I, I wanna drive this home a little bit. HF, or if you're using CB, that's on the 11 meter band. And this is one of the benefits to using UHF. It penetrates through things better because it is a shorter wavelength. So your attic antenna on a UHF frequency like GMRS or the ham 70 centimeter or even two meter if you're a ham is gonna work better as an attic antenna than if you're doing HF. HF almost has to be outside. That's my opinion. Other people may have different opinions than that. But CB, that's, that's a big downfall. I have a CB radio back there. We found that's a big downfall with CB radio is if you have to run an internal, you know, in your house antenna, it never performs as well as UHF or VHF signals. A consideration you have to make for an emergency base station radio at your house is grounding and running a power supply to it. You know, what is the use of an emergency radio if you cannot run it when the grid is down? I have another video that I'm gonna put here, and this is the way I have my radio powered. And it's, it's one of my favorite ways to do it. I don't like to use a power station for a 24 seven uh, power supply for my radios. Uh, this runs off solar and it's just got an inverter hook to it, but I'll put the video here. I don't want to get into the whole thing now, but if you want to pick up a base station that is already programmed, we have them at our store. I use the B-Tech 50X2. This is a dual band radio. Another thing you're going to need is an accessory kit. These base stations need a power supply, either a battery pack or a switching power supply, which we have an entire kit, comes with the ground, the lightning protection, everything. Everything you would need to run this radio and actually hook it up is in this Amazon list. I don't sell it on my site. We only sell the radio programmed on the site. We do not sell the entire kit. So you'd have to go here to pick all of that up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.